In this video, we delve into the fascinating world of sniper decoys and how they work. Join us as we explain the technology behind these decoys and put them to the test in various scenarios. Stay tuned to uncover the secrets behind the effectiveness of decoy snipers. Don't miss out on this informative and insightful exploration of sniper decoys. You are in your trench, taking cover from enemy sniper fire. Suddenly, the bullets stop and everything goes silent. You decide to peek out to see what's happening, and you're dead. The enemy sniper cleverly stopped to get your attention, make you come out of your position, and give you a clean headshot. Your premature demise could have been avoided with the help of a sniper decoy, an interesting and very intelligent tactic against snipers. Snipers are the perfect tool to instill fear in the enemy and immobilize large numbers of troops at the expense of a single soldier. Over time, new ways to counter snipers have been developed. One of the earliest methods was the use of sniper decoys. Despite their tradition in popular history, their effectiveness on the battlefield is debatable. While there have been some effective uses in the past, their utility today is much lower, but they are still a tool that could save your life. When wars were less technologically advanced, they worked quite well. During World War I, decoys saw sustained use when snipers became more common and sniper schools started to become more important and numerous. Snipers performed various functions. One of the main ones was taking out enemy officers and forcing soldiers to keep their heads down in a trench to hide the movements of their own troops. In World War I, snipers were incredibly difficult to detect. It was almost impossible to attack them because no one could be sure of their location. Initially, the Imperial German Army was the only one that seriously considered scoped rifles, and as soon as the British and French became aware of the German successes with these rifles, they introduced them into their own armies. Thus, it began to be analyzed that there had to be some kind of techniques to counter snipers. In World War I, methods were devised to discover the location of snipers since you can't fight what you can't see. Thus, the sniper decoy system was developed to solve this dilemma. It was defined that the best weapon to find and eliminate a sniper was and still is another sniper. Most infantry soldiers in World War I couldn't afford to hunt one personally since their armament was very limited. However, they could identify the enemy sniper's location and then attack the area with artillery fire. To discover the sniper's location, they first had to present an attractive target. Putting a full dummy out in the open would be obvious, but creating a papier-mâché head that peeked around a corner or above a trench could be tempting for the skills of a precision shooter. In World War I, papier-mâché was a popular and cheap material used to make dolls and components for amusement parks, carnivals, and exhibitions. The work of making papier-mâché dummy heads was entrusted to camouflage units. Sculptors made a wide variety of dummy heads with great precision and likeness to real human heads, paying special attention to details and color to make them look like skin. Although to our modern eyes, the papier-mâché heads wouldn't seem realistic, sniper scopes weren't advanced either, so anything human-shaped was a potential target. Soldiers dressed the heads to look like an officer of their army, making these targets very tempting for snipers since eliminating an officer could leave a section of the line leaderless. The heads were placed in areas where the enemy sniper was suspected to be present, usually before advancing to a new area or an important objective with a large number of troops. If the sniper fell for the papier-mâché head trick and fired, his presence and location could be confirmed. This was achieved by observing the angle of the entry wound in the fake head and calculating the distance and angle of the shot using the Pythagorean theorem. Known anchor points were also used to determine the exact location of the sniper. Decoys were used successfully, but soon enemy snipers realized the trick and developed their own methods to counter them, deliberately aiming at decoys and waiting for the enemy to appear. T. O. Make the decoys more realistic, soldiers dressed them in uniforms, placed rifles next to the dummies, and added details like lit cigarettes. In addition to human decoys, fake trees and fake horse carcasses were also used on the battlefield. Artificial trees were used as observation posts or sniper positions, and fake horse carcasses were widely used by the French side. These methods became obsolete over time due to improved enemy aerial reconnaissance. The famous Russian sniper Vasily Zaitsev warned about the natural tendency of snipers to easily detect a decoy and not be fooled by its presence. With advances in telescopic sights, 
the likelihood of an enemy detecting a decoy increased, as seen during the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. American soldiers reported that Iraqi forces used live decoys to divert U.S. fire from Iraqi soldiers. These human shields were civilians tasked with masking Iraqi movements, aiming to neutralize the technological and military advantage of the United States and make their snipers think twice before shooting. The main reason for improving counter-sniper methods has been the increase in field intelligence and information-gathering techniques. Thermal sensors, better aircraft, drone surveillance, and human intelligence help determine if the target is human or not, making fake decoys less likely to succeed. A papier-mâché dummy does not emit the same amount of heat as a human, so modern sniper rifles can easily determine if the target is real or fake. Although this tactic has fallen out of use in Western-style armies, it is still used to some extent by other armies. During the Saudi-led war in Yemen, it was reported that papier-mâché dummies were used to defeat and eliminate snipers. However, decoys have also evolved. A new portable device called PackBot has been created to detect the trajectory and range of a sniper's bullet. This device uses bullet distance calculation techniques combined with the creation of an angular formula for bullet origin. The PackBot has been used in both Iraq and Afghanistan, with favorable reports from the field. In tests, it was shown to predict the trajectory and range of a shooter with up to 94% accuracy in various calibers of common rifles and pistols, which is quite impressive. Additionally, the art of detecting sniper fire origins has become a dedicated science. The U.S. Army has been regularly organizing an annual acoustic symposium since 1992, turning sniper shot data into easily usable information. One of the main ways they have done this is by using infrared light and acoustic collection. By setting up an acoustic collection around urban areas, users can instantly gather data on where a shot came from. Additionally, infrared cameras can easily identify the trajectory and flight path of a bullet. Both technologies combined have proven very useful for the US Army and others for many years. That's all, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, where there is great new content every day. I wish you an excellent day.